Hey, look what we have found A big sound in a small town Far away from the bright lights They're making music every night Discover what is all around A big sound, a big sound. A big sound. Listening to Big Sound Small Town with Sandy Carlton. Heading out tonight, there ain't no moon in sight. I'm gonna make it 30 miles if I can. I'm gonna make it 30 miles if I can. Josh Carter from the Pretty Little Goat Band. Happy to be here. I'm yeah, Andy. well, we're, it's good. We're glad to, you know, have you up here to do the podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I start start with the name. That's a cool name. Right. Yeah. So, so it's a good. It's a good uh, icebreaker. Yeah. I mean, how did that happen? <laughs> it was a multifaceted story. Um, the short of it would be: um, so our band is rooted in old time music tradition. Mm-hmm. It's the tradition of our. Yeah. area which is really a world tradition i think True, i think it is roots from all over True. the place um and when the band was first forming I and mean, we went to all the old time gatherings and stayed up late at jams all the time yeah. when we were still in our 20s before yeah. having kids and right. whatever and uh and we discovered this tune uh called pretty little dog right it's an old time tune and found out that it came from pretty little cat which is an irish <laughs> tune so in the name of tradition sort of evolving, we thought, well, why not Pretty Little Goat? Yeah, that uh, works. We, we had goats at the time. As well. Yeah, I love goats, man. They're, yeah. they're, they're the coolest things. Uh, they're pig- hard to keep in a fence, though. Yes, they <laughs> are. Uh, pygmies work better than, than big goats, but mm-hmm. but still, they're still hard to keep in a, in a, in a pen. Mm-hmm. Well, that is a, um, see, that's how music works. I mean, how many fiddle tunes have you learned over the years and then find out it has a different name? You know, or you know, maybe two different names. Right. I mean, that's kind of the yeah, that's kind of the way it is with old old time stuff. So, mm-hmm. uh, how long have, has your band been together in the form? Uh, well, let's just start it from the beginning. Okay, um, we've, we've been together for ten years. Yeah, officially. I knew you've been together a pretty good while. It's pretty little goat. Um, my wife and I had spent some time before that um, playing around. We did, yeah. a, we did a busking tour around the states where we. 
we just went from town to town and would post up on the streets in one town long enough to get gas money to go to the next town and uh, didn't pay a dime out of our pockets that whole time. It was was such a cool experience. Oh, it's cool. Busking is, uh, every musician should have to busk at some point. It's pretty honest. It is. It is. I mean, it, it, it really is. And you learn a bit of people skills that, that sometimes that if you just go out and play and you didn't have to uh, entice people to listen to you in a, in a different way, then, yeah, I mean, it's a whole different skill set than the guy who just comes in and, and plays a job without busking. <laughs> I mean, busking is cool. Uh, and uh, to this day, uh, Asheville is one of the best busking towns probably in the United States. I still go down there from time to yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, it's just, great. Just kind of for fun, set yeah. up on the street. I've done that before, too. And, you know, sometimes I make more money than I make playing with my real band. So, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> on a good day, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the summertime with a lot of tourists, yeah, it's good. Um, I, I don't know where to – yeah, I'll go here. So how is it playing music with your wife? No. <laughs> That's kind of a loaded question. <laughs> that is a loaded question. <laughs> you know, it was it was way harder at first. Right. For sure. That's like the ultimate test of a relationship. Sure it is. Is, is get in there and play some, not only play some music, but try writing some music together. Oh, yeah, writing is terrible it's, together. It's, um, it can be, you know, it's just such an emotionally charged topic from the beginning because music is so important to people, everybody, right. and, um, and, and it's very personal. Sure. Um, but I think it's over the years it's been the best thing for a relationship. I mean, we've, we've grown so much together and learn to get along in ways that sure. I never thought would be possible. Yeah. We've just had to, we've got to these like kind of head on head moments where we just had to both lay down our arms, so to speak, yeah. and go, okay, we don't, we don't need to bicker about this. You know? True. It's yeah. Just, uh, and, and so learning to take things a little less personally and learning to think before we Is writing with your spouse hard? Uh, it, it's the same thing initially, very much. Yeah. So, yeah. but now it's now it's one of my favorite things. Oh, that's good. That's man. all. We'd spend more time writing music than we do rehearsing. Um, well, that's a beautiful thing because writing music. I mean, it's hard to co-write with people. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you know, as a songwriter, you spend a lot of time co-writing, but a lot of a lot of people don't. And when you first start co-writing, it's like I don't know. You know, so hard. it is hard. Yeah. Co-writing's harder than doing it by yourself for sure because if somebody changes something you did it's so hard not to take it personally uh, it is it is and that that is one of the things that is uh you know i think that turns a lot of people away from songwriting because maybe not for you but one of the hardest things for me to do is a new song that i have for someone i care about mm-hmm. you know i can do it for a complete stranger mm-hmm. no big deal they either like it or they don't but you know it's someone you care about you want them to like it but they're also sometimes brutally honest, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like, ouch, man, I really like that song, you know. Yeah, sure. So, especially so. if you're brutally honest about that person in the song. Yeah, oh yeah, that oh yeah, that's even worse. Um, <laughs> I, I played a song for a friend once, and he was like, "You wrote that about me, didn't you?" Uh, <laughs> no, uh, uh, I have a song that called "She Loves Me Too Much," and yeah, I can't. My wife always gives me junk about you know. She loves you too. You know, I love you too much. You know, and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah maybe. You know, it's, like, it's kind of just a song, too. Yeah, that's what I always say. No, no, it's made up about someone else. You know, no, it's not about you. So, how has playing the Earl Scruggs Festival been? Oh, it's such a treat. Was it's it different treat. today than yesterday? Uh, I would say so. Yeah, very much so. I mean, there's more going on. True. Today, yesterday. Um, felt a little more intimate because yeah. um, it was just two bands on the sure. um, on the uh, Foggy Mountain stage, yeah. and you know, that's where everyone was. And True. It was like, you know, everybody was there for the first set. We watched that band, and right. then they, you know, everybody stuck around for the second. Yeah. So it felt more like a concert, whereas yeah. it feels more like a festival. True, today. and you had like Reedy, Reedy River to kick it off for you, which yeah. is... They're phenomenal. Yeah, they're good. They're, they're really, really good. That. Yeah, they're good. And, you know, that's... a. Uh, so today was different, though, wasn't it? I mean, there were a lot more people today. Yeah, more people and more people just kind of walking by, yeah. and turning their heads, and that's kind of fun. It's kind of a, a, a good test, a good test of your musicianship too, if you can, uh, you know, if you can get people to stop where, wherever sure. they're going and, and stop and listen. Yeah, kind of similar to busking. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah, 
It's like um, uh, I played a job. You can't put me in windows if it's a it's a venue and it has a window. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll spend my time looking out the window and be lucky to hit a right note. You know, right. where, whereas if you you know, I can't. I, obviously, I can't do two things at one time. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so about new material. What do you have going on? Oh, new material. I mean, that's. Uh kind of what I'm living for right now is, is writing music. Um, I probably started writing music about eight years ago. Um, we were pretty much strictly an old-time string band when we started. And Yeah, I think I saw you guys early on, and you were string pretty much a straight-up string band. Straight-up, old-time, yeah. fiddle banjo kind yeah. of music. And yeah. we still love that stuff, yeah. for sure. But it's, it's good uh, stuff, no doubt. Gradually moving more towards... Um, to, more towards, towards creativity, and I started asking myself this question more and more, like, is there still a lot of new music to be written? Right. Yeah. Sure, of course there yeah. is. Somehow there is. With Somehow all the there is. Out there, there's still songs to be written, and, and I'm always searching for them. Uh, I mean, I've got, you know, music's not my full-time thing. Sure. I build houses. Sure. Um, my wife and I homestead a bit. We have yeah. a couple dairy cows. And, yeah, that's um, cool. But I, I love that kind of stuff because I often find myself doing mindless activities, you know, cutting siding or putting roofing on or milking the cows or I can just have music running through my head. And I have tons of blueberries and that is my zen time is in blueberry season. Yeah. Is It starts out as zen then it turns out more like hell but still, you know, <laughs> like it's, yeah, it, 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 you know, it's like, oh, this is pretty cool when it starts but, but right. not so. Was it hard for you to step away? Not really away because you haven't really stepped away but to, to make a transition past old time? Um, it, it, felt, it felt very natural, like kind of a natural progression. Um, because uh, the band, the band I mean, we have such wonderful cohesion right. between us. And um, Owen, is, Owen is the other permanent member. Yeah, he's been, been there, there forever, the right, yeah. Um, but everybody that we've played with, we just love it so much. And it feels like such an important thing to keep going. And... Uh, I don't know. I, at some point, you get as a band, you get kind of burnt out of just doing old time, sure. old time music. So yeah. it kind of felt like a natural well, progression. That, and, that. and some of my favorite music it comes from bands that were born out of a tradition sure. like that, where they started writing music inspired yeah. by these centuries old songs. That, I'll give you a crazy one. Do you know who Donald the Buffalo is? Oh yeah, I love them. Do you realize Jeb and Tara both come from a? a old-time string band background. Oh, sure, I believe that. So, I mean, it's pretty cool the way they've evolved theirs, you know. I mean, it's uh, totally different than where they... Um, in fact, I think they were at Galax maybe last year, you know. I mean, it's, which is still crazy that they go do that. Yeah. You know, I mean, with, within a tour, you know. Right. Like, Playing all these big festivals yeah. and concerts. Yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of weird how things... How you have your, your roots in one thing and it evolves, you know. Mm-hmm. But there again, it's still music. Yeah, and there's something real special about just kind of sitting around in a tight, intimate circle. With it is sometimes strangers, sometimes old friends, and just playing some familiar tunes. Going to going to um, well, speaking of that, making the transitions. I guess you've had to go electric as opposed to the. I mean, you're not just playing in front of mics, right? You know, kind of plugging in a little. Yeah, bit which more. is which is um, yeah different. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the, the technology with plugging acoustic instruments in has gotten so good. So good. That it's, I just, I, I always plug in just so that I don't sure. have to deal with the feedback. You don't. Uh, and in, the, in the wedges and that yeah, sure. high pitch noise. And, you know, it's, it's, it's the, I use Tony Rice as a um, traditional, let's not plug anything in. Mm-hmm. And you realize so many times when you saw Tony, you couldn't actually hear his lead breaks and stuff because well <laughs> he was unplugged and yeah. you know depending on who his banjo player was it gets kind of loud or you know so yeah, a lot of places you can only turn the microphone up so true. much and the gather around stuff I mean Dale's, Dale has done that pretty well but it's hard to gather around and, and get everybody to get up in the mic right like they need to mm-hmm. too so plugging in is the way to go yeah, yeah. And, um, with Mallory well, especially having a percussionist sure. involved, it's it's almost it, necessary. It is, it is, and that that is um, 
Mal- speaking of evolving, Mallory's gone from just playing a little scrub board to start adding some bells and then a kick drum and some cymbals and a hand drum and it's, it's kind of turned into its own unique version of a drum set. I understand. I played with a band who went through that and before it was over we had a drum kit. So, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> same person but, you know, it kept evolving to, you know, it's like, well, now we actually have a drummer. So, that's pretty cool. What all you have coming up? Y'all have a lot of jobs Oh, I've been uh, pretty so busy here of late. We've had a pretty busy year, especially the spring was really wonderful. Yeah. We played um, Merle Fest yep. and went up to Indiana. And saw all you guys at Merle Fest. Yeah. Here and, um, nice. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah, Merle Fest is the best. I love oh. Merle Fest. <laughs> Merle Fest is the best. You know, it really is. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we're kind of tapering down. We're playing at our little local library. They have an amphitheater true. out back in a couple weeks. Um, that's really about it. Mallory's pregnant um, oh, I did not know a, that as a surrogate oh that's cool um, which is I think a really brave and amazing yeah, very gift brave and amazing to some friends of ours I agree that it is and, um, um, bring another life into the world but, sure uh, and we're working on another album so we're kind of toned it back a little bit this fall for playing out so. I know you I, I'm not asking for a location or anything but where do you call your base out of uh, Brevard Brevard mm-hmm. yeah I mean that's the going <laughs> place these days you know I oh, know yeah. so many musicians who live there now it's it's amazing the music scene that has developed i grew up in brevard and and oh you grew uh, up there so you have seen it evolve it was just a little paper mill town when i was a kid and um then the paper mill closed along with all the other major plants that were the major employer i mean we had the highest unemployment rate i would believe that for a long time there was really nothing there it was it was pretty quiet um and then all of a sudden, people started discovering how amazing the place is. I mean, it is an amazing place. So much public land, and all the, you know, they call it the land of the waterfalls for sure. a reason. Yeah, because there's, there's a lot of really cool ones and, there. I agree. Um, but apparently, I think I think for even way before me, it was always this kind of interesting music vortex. I mean, the Brevard Music Center was sure, there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, there are definitely a lot of musicians who have been kind of hiding out in the hills True. there for a while. And now Travis has come and got oh, yeah. kind of put Brevard on the map, but kind well, of musically, you know. All kinds of people have been putting Brevard on the map. They have. Steep they Canyon have. Rangers. Steep Canyon Rangers, yeah. Probably Jeff yeah. Seif lives there. Yeah, Jeff he's, does. He's always been my favorite drummer. Jeff did the podcast. Jeff, yeah. Jeff is a really interesting guy. Mm-hmm. Side yes. being the best drummer you'll ever come across. Mm-hmm. And a nice guy, too. So nice. So he's playing with Daryl Scott these days, too. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, he's played with everybody. So, yeah, of course, um, it doesn't surprise it, No, no. But, yeah, it's a good scene there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I, I'm sure it's a fun place to live, you know. Absolutely, yeah. And we I, play at um, yeah, the, local, the local place to play music and see music is 185 King sure. Street now, for sure. I mean, yeah. it's, they've done such a great job developing that. They, you, they really have. We That's usually play there a couple times a year and yeah. just always have such a blast. Yeah, it's a great place. It's a, it's a whole great thing. So have you got songs written? Are you doing songs that you're going to put on a new record out in your live show? Um, yeah, the new, yeah we're, playing, we're playing some songs from the, the next record that right. we're working on. At our live show, I, to me, that's part of the process, and I'm sure a lot of artists kind of like to you know, do their recordings and like you know, make it a sure. surprise when they. And there's something really noble and interesting about that. Um, there I is really cool, but I also um, like to let the song live a little bit before you exactly. record it too. You know, I think mm. songs have a life of their own, mm. and they evolve, um, you know, as you go along. So. You can start playing them live, and it'd be totally different than what you brought in at the beginning. Right. You know, which is which is a, a beautiful thing. Yeah. But sometimes people, they, hey, well, you can do it after you record a song. But, mm-hmm. I mean, the song can always evolve, but it evolves. If you give it a life to evolve with before you record it, it's even cooler. I think so. I think so. I think mm-hmm. there's something really powerful about just getting that feedback from a live audience yeah. on oh, yeah. the song, too. Yeah, it is, and you, you have one of those things like, uh, and then sometimes you know they don't work. You know, it's like, well, yeah, maybe I have to rethink this one. You know, maybe it's not for this right. one. You yeah. know, 
not yeah. getting not getting the response I thought I would get out of it. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. But you probably don't have that. I've had that, oh, no, and I, most I, people I've like had. Ninety percent of my songs that I write just yeah. trash. Well, and I think <laughs> that's everyone. Even even if you look at someone prolific like Bob Dylan, mm-hmm. you realize he has tons of trash, mm-hmm. and that's the ones that he's recorded. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, he's got. Tons of trash that he never recorded. So. Tons of trash that people wish he had recorded, too. True, true. This is true, yeah. So, I mean, I, th- I think that um, and I, I've always been – You pro- or how good a judge are you at what is, like, going to be the best song off of one of your records? Mm, oh. Uh, I'm not very good at that. I'm not either. <laughs> I'm horrible at it. Songs that I think um, uh, are good – sometimes aren't mm-hmm. and then uh my videographer over here i was going to throw a song away one time and one of his daughters liked it mm-hmm. and it turned out to be a really really mm-hmm. good song for me so yeah you never know how it's going to sound for somebody else you don't and and then you know i guess there is a part to where we make that for ourselves, but we also make it for other people too mm-hmm. so there is a i think i can usually tell about you know like 10 minutes into writing a song if I think it feels catchy or not. Yeah, so. yeah, you can kind of, mm-hmm. kind of, yeah. yeah. Um, or sometimes you think you wrote a really catchy song only to find out that it's just like somebody else's. Yeah, oh, well, I've done that too, and that's, that that's way, always... I was just learning this other song. That yeah, I exactly. <laughs> and, I, and I think that happens a lot, you know. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, yeah. Or someone will point that out to me. I did not catch it, and they'll say, you realize that's so-and-so, right? And I go, uh... I guess it is. Yeah. Yeah, so. and sometimes you just have like little snippets or like a phrase that might sound like another song and I I think that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's great. Well there's a and bit of there's a bit of theft in every song ever written. I mean mm-hmm. you know, I mean we're not gonna come up with new chord patterns for the most part. Right. And yeah. people and most people are depend their ears are tuned to the same basic things. Uh Everything's yeah. derivative to it, some extent. Sure. So, I mean, so there are things that work, so there's no reason not to go with the things that work. Mm-hmm. And then you become Tom Waite, maybe, you know, or, <laughs> you know, you do something really strange, which is which is cool, too. But, yep. you know. Gotta push the limits. You do. Absolutely. You really do. What else we need to know? Oh, I don't know. We're just um, really loving playing music for people and want to keep doing it. That's cool. Getting it out there. Well, yeah, I mean, y'all have been playing a long time, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. You know, bands come and go, so that's great. <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking the time out. I know you've been busy. This has been a busy weekend for you, so. I'm, I'm sure you as well. Yeah, appreciate so, you having me on stage. Oh, man, it was great, Josh. Thank you. Somebody take a solo man. 
you know we'll all be dead. Maybe it doesn't have to feel so bad. What we lose is all we've had. Well, I've been searching all over, trying to find the time for you. But if 